So and I spent that entire time just immersed in excellence, watching these incredible athletes do amazing things and to perform under pressure. And what began to emerge for me, and you know, as a scientist, you always sort of think about these things, what began to emerge for me was the consistent things that the Olympians were doing who were successful. And if you watch them and if you see these specific things that these athletes do over and over and over again, you begin to see that, in fact, they're actually quite simple. And all of us can use them as well. And I got really inspired by that because it meant that we could take that information from these world-class athletes and bring it out into situations like this so we can all learn to be better, so we all can all learn to be healthier, so we can all learn to perform at a much higher level. And that's what I'm going to try to talk to you about today. I want to use examples from world-class athletes, from also from some of the experience I've, ha I've had at the Hospital for Sick Children, where I'm a scientist, to inspire you and show you how we can take this information from the extremes and bring it back down to what all of us can do on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's begin with the challenge, your specific challenge. And in preparing for this talk, I was speaking to the organizers and, and did a little bit of research about some of the challenges that you're all faced with. Apparently, we have high workloads. Not to stress all of you out right now thinking about this, but whatever. Uh, you, need, you need to get more done in less time. Apparently, you have some government regulation to deal with that changes from time to time. I was sitting with uh, people from Revenue Quebec here, so I'm trying to be gentle about that so that they don't fight. Uh, stress, pressure, work-life balance, getting more done in less time. And the amazing thing for me about this is I went through my list, and I actually did a talk for BC Forestry on Friday. It was the identical list. I did a talk for Bank of Montreal three weeks ago, same list. I did a talk for Janssen Pharmaceuticals right after the Olympics, same list. This is consistent across our entire society. You're not alone. You may feel like you're alone because I understand in, in payroll, quite often you're the only person working payroll in your organization. So whereas other people may have a department to rely upon, you guys are an island in and of, your, of yourselves and trying to function in this high pressure scenario. Which is really cool, because that's exactly the type of environment that Olympians are faced with. This is a great shot of Rosie McLennan, Canada's only gold medalist. You all have that gold medal on your table. You can touch it right now and get a little sense of what she felt like right at that particular moment. But she's a trampolinist. She's a gymnast. And so if you think about her specific situation and how she must feel right there, tell me you don't feel like that on some work days. Right? All by yourself, upside down, hanging in the balance, and you're like, oh my god, i got to get somewhere. Right? That's the world we're faced with. That's what we're, we all have to do. That's what I feel like at the hospital sometimes. That's what I feel like in, on stage in front of uh, 800 people, freaking out, because I'm quite nervous, and I hope I don't do anything wrong. Um, what, we're what we're faced with, what we're, what we're challenged with is, I believe, can be distilled down to this particular statement. And this is what I want you to be able to take away from this presentation today. I want you to be able to create an atmosphere of excellence around yourself. And we have to do that in an incredibly challenging environment. Volatility is the new normal. Change, the pace of change is only going to increase. If you think back to the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and I mean right here, it happened all around us. It wasn't that long ago. It certainly doesn't feel like that long ago. There was no such thing as an iPad. Now there's an entire industry related to this particular device, which is coated in plastic to protect it from my three-year-old at home. But anyway, this is an iPad. It doesn't look like this. Normally it does. We have to survive in this environment, and I believe that we can do that. And I saw an incredible example of someone that's able to do this. I Hopefully will, this will inspire you. How can we perform under pressure? And uh, I got a chance to work with Olympic athletes, and right before the last Olympics, I went and did some work with a, a young kayaker named Adam Vancouverden. You can see him in, in yellow. He reasonable athlete won a bunch of medals at the last three Olympics. You can see he's sort of fit. Check out his arms. Pretty strong guy. Uh, and he's next to Anders Gustafsson from Sweden. And at this point, uh, about a month before the Olympic Games, this is the number one and number two athlete in the world in kayaking, in a training set together. And I gave him a set of 16 times four minutes, as hard as they could possibly go on two minutes rest. So it was literally the most excruciating workout that I could possibly think of for them. And I threw the number one and number two in the world up against each other just to see what would happen. And they went at it. And they trained and they were working really, really hard. You can imagine this, the top two people in the world right before the Olympic Games, training as hard as they could, head to head. And I was snapping pictures from the Zodiac. Again, another tough day at Greg's work. But anyway, talking pictures from the Zodiac. And I got home at night and I was looking and I saw some incredible stuff. I saw this amazing shot. 
And I looked at this and I was like, oh my god, everything's great. Adam's going to do fantastic. Here's why. Take a look at Adam in yellow's hand. He's barely gripping the paddle. Three fingers. He's so relaxed. He's so relaxed, his tongue is hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Compare that to Anders Gustafsson. Look at the tension and stress in his face. Look at his hand. His forearm is gripping the paddle so hard, you can actually see the veins bulging in his forearm. That's incredible difference between these two athletes. One of them is energized and working hard. The other one is full of tension. Six weeks later at the Olympics, Adam was second, silver medal. Anders Gustafsson, seventh. So this ability to perform under pressure, this ability to stay calm, cool, collected, and relaxed while still trying as hard as you can, while still having this amazing energy, for me, is really critical. And that's a key learning point that I believe that all of us can pull away from the Olympians to inspire us that it is, in fact, possible to achieve excellence on a day-to-day -day basis, to have energy while doing so, to have no tension while doing so, and to be wildly successful and actually get healthier, which is ultimately what it's all about.